What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris and today I'm going to show you five hacks that I use in Ableton on a daily basis. The first tip is using the internal pitch envelopes and oscillators in Sampler. I do this quite a lot, so for example if I have a bass note sample and it sounds quite dull, like this one for example, the first thing I do is I transform the simpler into a sampler. You do that by right clicking up here and clicking sampler. What you can then do is you can jump into the pitch envelope here and play around with it and you can actually, for example, add attack to the bass. Already has way more attack and sounds better than before. Another cool thing that you can do is you can add an oscillator. The oscillators in this sampler are actually super cool. You have a lot of selections of sine waves here. Let's, for example, use a triangle wave. Add a little spread. And you have a super interesting cool sound made entirely in sampler based on a simple bass note. The second tip is looping your samples for unique sound design. We're just going to use the sound that we've just built. To loop a sound you just have to select a different sustain mode. In this case I'll just use this back and forth sustain mode and I'm going to leave the start point of the sample around here. So if I press the note it will then loop this little part. I'm going to add a little crossfade so that it's not too harsh. <laughs> And you've just made a lead out of a bass sound, it's going to play forever. You can tone down the crossfade a bit, maybe drag it a bit further here so that you actually have the starting point of the sample and that it loops through the silence part. And then if you go to the MIDI section and you want to add a pitch band range of 24, you basically created an effect. The third tip is creating your own instrument racks and saving them to your preset folder. So let's say this sound is an instrument that we've just made. Let's say for example we've built a little chain here and we want to save this entire thing as an instrument so we can use it later. All you have to do is you got to mark your instrument and your processing chain and you want to press command G again and then you have this group. And then on the bottom down here you have this little save button. So if I press the save button and we want to call this, let's just call it tutorial fx for effect we have now saved this into an instrument rack those are saved in instruments instrument rack so if i want to use this again i can simply take this and drag it onto the project and we have the exact same sound with all the same settings saved for future use next tip is doing the exact same thing for effect racks in the very first video of this channel we have built a little instrument rack but now i'm going to show you how you can build them yourself and save them for future use let's say we've built a cool instrument rack and we want to put a processing chain behind it. Let's say we always need a high pass filter to cut the low end out. We always need a bit of side chain compression on this, which we can then map to a kick. And let's say we always want a utility plugin just to control the volume. What you can then do the same thing, you mark these three, you group them and you save them into your audio effects as a preset. And you're done. The next tip is for the piano roll. Let's say you recorded a few chords. So now in order to hear the different chords in the chord progression, usually you would click in the beginning and then you would listen to the whole thing over and over. You can easily jump into the third chord by just pressing one of the notes and hitting your option or alt key and spacebar. All you have to do is you have to hold alt and then you can hit the space bar and every time you hit the space bar it will play that exact chord. Very helpful if you want to play around and want to change notes but don't want to listen to your whole chord progression at all times. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you found these tips helpful. Make sure to subscribe for more tips in the future and more tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.